We're going to start with the Mega Squirt version 3 circuit board. Um, this board was designed uh, 2001, maybe, maybe 2002. Well, actually, I think 2002 they were still at uh, V2.2. So, anyways, this thing, it's going on 15 years old. It had some design flaws from the beginning, um, minor changes that they should have done, like uh, these. Uh, 2N triple two or quad twos are uh, the transistors. Um, the pins are way the hell too close together for most people to solder, and even if you do solder them right, they're just too close together. So basic things like that. Yeah, pardon this board. This is I used to sell and repair and upgrade Mega Squirt boards, and this is one that somebody else put together, and it was just a disaster. And I ended up just swapping it out for a new board. I sold them. I upgrade for a real good price, and kept this as a spare. So. And I've sal salvaged a lot of parts off of it. And I also tried to remove all, all the parts to fix it, but uh, traces started coming up. But anyways, that's beside the point. This board, um, it, it's got a lot of noise issues. Um, you start, it, it only had a output for a one uh, ignition output. The onboard injector drivers kind of suck. Not as bad as the uh, Mega Squirt 3Xs suck, but... They, uh, they weren't great. Um, you start doing PWM on the injector drivers and the Megasquirt Extra firmware just goes nuts with uh, false triggers and shit. So it's not a very good board. Um, so with that in mind and the fact that it was pretty clear that they were never going to design a better board, um, I started designing my own. Um, so this is what I came up with. I called it the Diet Squirt because one of my ideas was to make it cheap. The size of this, as you can see, Lay against that board, it uh, it's much smaller. I'm gonna put it in this corner. It's that big. Um, this is the maximum size of Eagle. I was using Eagle at the time. I've since switched to KiCad, but I haven't gone back and redesigned this because I I laid it out for the first version, although it says version 3.1, because uh, I just kept uh, updating the uh, schematic and layout and stuff, and I just kept incrementing the number even though I didn't save the prior versions. So, anyways, I'm at 3.1, so that's where it's at. Um, it's the maximum eagle size. It it's a 50 by 100, um, so it's fairly cheap to have made by the Chinese manufacturers. You submit this to uh, Osh Park. It's really expensive to make three of these, but at 50 by 100, 10 of these it's like 20 bucks in any color you want. So that's pretty nice. Um, I recommend Elecro. Um, that's who I had make these. Anyways, um, diodes are through hole because I could not find decently priced uh, surface mount diodes. Uh, maybe I'm just not very good at searching the uh, Digikey and Mauser, but that's what I ended up with. Uh, it says revision three here. I forgot to up. I, I should have made that like a variable so I could update it one spot and they all update. But anyways, okay. So I've got this uh, 15 pin connector. Um, it's you know Mega Squirt always use the DB9 and the DB25 or 37. What yeah DB37. Um, I went with a DB25 and a DB15. The 15 is the input. Um, so all the low um, current inputs come in on this side. Um, to get buffered and go into the CPU. All the high current outputs go through the transistors and stuff and go out this side. I have one assembled. Well, let's go to the back side first. As you can see on the back side, I've got all of the pins labeled, so you know what they are. See my outputs, I've got injector channel one and two. Those are actually low current. I didn't put any high current injector drivers on here because I had intended to use um, uh, JB Perf's uh, peak and hold board. Uh, he seems to have since stopped selling it, so I'll probably have to make my own. They still sell the uh, chips that drive the peak and hold circuitry, so I'll just re-implement the board that he used to sell. Uh, fuel pump output, radiator fan output, tack output. Obviously, the, um, then the inputs, 12 volt in, 5 volt out, air temperature, coolant temperature, throttle position sensor, oxygen sensor, cam sensor, crank sensor, map sensor, and then logic ground. Um, I tried my best to separate the two grounds. In fact, um, I think somewhere on here I've got one. Well, we can go over that in the schematic. I think there's one spot. Yeah, ground join. Here we go. Right there. You put a jumper wire there, and it gr it connects the uh, low current ground to the high current ground, and uh, that way uh, it might cause a ground loop. I don't know. I haven't tried this design out as much as I'd like to. And in fact, I don't think I even powered it up. Anyways, but that's what that is. Uh, clock crystal goes here. 
Um, I didn't feel like putting my name on here because I know how um, litigation happy the uh, Mega Squirt crew are. They uh, can't innovate, so they just keep litigating. But anyways, uh, I'm not selling the thing. Never will. This is uh, simply to share. So I've got one that's mostly assembled. Let's grab that. Okay, so there it is assembled. This uh, right here is a, oh, what was the number on this thing? Oh, I can't recall. It'll be in the schematic. We'll go over it then. Anyways, power supply circuitry is over here. Um, yeah, this is all output. So this is a noisy section right here. I tried to put off in the corner. Um, I think these are um, Darling, uh, um, oh, we'll get to it later. These are the IGBTs, another high noisy thing. I've got it far over in the corner. Um, I got a ground plane on the top and the bottom. Ground planes. Um, there, it's only two layer, top and bottom. Um, FTDI chip right here um, on the low on the low noise side, and a micro USB port. So no antique either, uh, antique serial that nobody has anymore. Um, don't recall what that is. It'll be in the schematic. Um, map sensor would go here. I hadn't gotten that far. Um, part of the problem I ran into with this thing was the um, capacitor right here, C903 and C901. C901 is too big, and uh, it blocks C C903 was even bigger, I believe. So I couldn't get the capacitors to fit, so I needed to go back and relay out the board. These uh, connectors, they're too far inboard. You see, they're, they need to go about a tenth of an inch farther out. Uh, so same thing on the other end there you go see so that it, it would it would technically work but uh, it clearly needs some redesign oh where's my camera there we go let's see um, boot jumper here so this one's just about ready to be powered up I because I couldn't get the power supply circuit working I set it aside and then I went through a divorce so I never got back to it I'm getting back to it now and you guys are benefiting. I wanted to have it fully done, tested, and working before I shared everything, eh, but screw it. So I call it Diet Squirt because the idea was to make this super cheap. See, originally when the when the Mega Squirt came out, it was a $150 unit, and that was the V2.2 um, when we did a group buy on them. And then they started doing kits, and of course the price went up a little bit because you got somebody else buying the parts for you. And then we um, went to the V3, and suddenly the price is 190 and it just keeps going up. And they never revised this crappy design, so um, that's what I wanted to do. These boards, like I said, you get 10 of them for 20 bucks, um, shipped out of China. Um, so that's like 2 bucks a board. And then all the components on it, except for like the CPU, um, you could still buy these for like seven bucks from the uh, distributors, I believe. Otherwise, you just buy them straight from uh, DigiKey or something, probably. But anyways, um, all told, um, minus the processor, which was seven bucks, it was fifty bucks worth of components per board. Um, if you're buying in groups of ten, um, obviously you're going to have a lot of extra boards if you do that, and uh, selling these would be a really bad idea. So find some buddies nearby, some local friends who want to do it, or build 10 cars, and uh, you won't have a problem. Um, you know, the more expensive components, I only bought enough to do one or two boards, and then a lot of the other components that I bought enough to do 10 boards, I simply um, just, you know, it's not a big deal because they're really cheap. Like surface, A lot of this is surface mount. A lot of people are afraid of surface mount. It's not a real big deal. You take some nice little tweezers and there's plenty of videos online so you just you'd hold the part and you tap the soldering iron at each end of the component if you got a good fine tip soldering iron it's not a big deal actually this isn't even a very good tip for soldering iron I need to put a better tip on this thing uh, let's see I've got another tip over here this is my standard tip there we go and you can see it down near these components nice and small and uh, this one's all wore out it's all corroded but, uh, so, yeah, the, um, let's uh, go into the schematic and go from there. Over the schematic and the board layout. We'll start with the schematic. So, 
I'm going to double click this. There we go. Full screen. Now, this is a schematic. As you can see, everything is super tiny right now. This is because uh, you cannot do multiple sheets in the free version of Eagle. So I squeezed it all onto one sheet by making it ridiculously tiny. So let's start over here. Um, a little bit smaller. So this is the voltage regulator. I'm using a 33063, 34063. It's a really cheap um, microchip branded um, voltage regulator. It uh, switch mode. It takes the uh, 12 volts in, gives you a nice clean uh, 5 volts out. I don't know if I had done the cleanup circuit on this. I don't. doesn't look like I did. Um, on some of my later boards, I realized that the output from this initially is pretty dirty. It needs to go through a uh, uh, LC filter to clean it up some more. So this design is uh, probably not going to provide clean enough power, but it might work. So that's one thing that needs to be changed. Um, but uh, it, it just takes 12 volts in, does some switch mode stuff to it. It's super efficient, really small, really cheap, That's and it's a modern power supply. Um, over here we've got the, uh, this looks like the um, um, map sensor, 4-bar map sensor, Motorola brand, um, surface mount. It's what they use um, on the newer Mega Squirts and stuff. Or, you know, it's pretty common for the 3 and 4-bar map sensors. Um, okay, so... Let's reduce this and go to the next section. This is my ground join jumper here. Um, over here we've got, I should have labeled these areas. It's been a couple of years since I worked on this board. No, this is the boot boot jumper circuit for the uh, processor. So it goes to the 84 one pin over here anyways. Down here we've got the um, it uh, looks like we've got LEDs. Um, these are the drivers for the LEDs. So, so next, this circuit. I'm not sure. Oh, this is the oxygen sensor input circuit. Okay. So, I see it says O2 right there. O2. So, diet squirt, PCB revision 3.1. Like I said, I was just jumping through the revision numbers really fast. Um, here's a clock crystal circuit, oscillator, some uh, capacitors over here, uh, 10, uh, 10 mega farad, or, no, mega ohm, yeah, mega ohm resistor. Uh, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I don't have any of this scripted, so pardon me if I misspeak here and there. Here's the microprocessor. Um, if you were trying to put the Mega Squirt 2 daughter board into here, some of these pins are in different orders, so you'd have to completely respin the board to do it. I don't put any jumpers on here. This was a single-use board. It's meant to be cheap, not versatile. Um, the FT-232. I was actually thinking about swapping this out with an Atmega, one of the ones with native USB, and then I would have the ability to have the serial from the Mega Squirt go through the Atmega, and it could pretend to be a serial USB. It could also drive a SD card so we could have onboard data logging on Megasquirt 1. And that would be pretty freaking wicked. But, uh, you know, that was a future endeavor, not, not on the first one. Okay, here's ULN2003AD. This is the chip I couldn't remember the name of when I was browsing the board. These are ridiculously cheap, and they have a whole bunch of transistors inside. So you can drive all sorts of things off of this. See, we've got the three LEDs. Um, we've got several outputs. I don't. Uh, uh, we've got fuel pump, idle, fan, tachometer. Um, yeah. So you got this one chip that's got all the transistors in it. You don't have to solder those really tiny 2N quad two transistors. So here's the the. The pins, the DB15 and the DB25, I uh, picked these just like the Megasquirt did because they're crazy cheap. Um, that's the only reason. Um, oh, you know, something I forgot to mention. This board, I'm, uh, I made the board uh, 50 by 100 millimeter. There is no case this thing fits in. So I was actually just going to stick it in a static bag and call it good. But uh, you could 3D print a case to put it in. So here is um, 
I believe this is, oh yeah, this is an opto isolator for the crank and cam input. So we've got crank signal here, cam signal here. Uh, opto isolators are great. I like them. They work, um, I think they work with both uh, VR sensors and hall sensors. I've used them with hall sensors quite a bit, and it's always worked great for me. Um, I'm pretty sure they were originally intended for the VR sensors. So it'll work with either one. It's nice and robust. Um, if you need something else, just swap out this circuit. Um, over here, uh, this is my injector um, driver of some sort. I don't recall what it is. You'll have to check the BOM. I don't even have this chip labeled on here. It's probably that um, big square chip that I don't recognize. No, that's near the inputs. I don't know. Anyways. It's, I shouldn't have waited so long to make this uh, documentation about this project. Anyways, let's switch to the board layout. Um, which button is it? Yeah. Boink, there's the board, full screen. Okay. Now, like I said, it's 30 by 50, no, it's 50 by 100 millimeters. Yeah, that's right. This is the maximum board size Eagle will allow you. This, uh, this component needs to come out some. Um, uh, it uh, it you can't really tell from this drawing that this line is supposed to be in line with the edge of the board, not this line. So shift this over to there, and you're good. You'll have to redo the traces. Um, these bigger, thicker traces for the IGBTs. I did these hand routing to get current, high flow current to them, and then everything else I just clicked auto route. So as evil as everybody says auto route is, it does the job. Especially when you got this many components in this tight of a space. Okay, so this chip over here is LTV826S. I'm not real sure what that's doing for me. The ULN2003 is right here. Um, it says I've got an MC34151 there. I don't recall what that is. Uh, the 34063 is right here. You got the map sensor over here. Um, Oh, and I do have this thing. Let's see. I want to do it. No. Options. How do I? Tools. Rats Nest. There we go. See, there's the ground plane on the board. So that uh, makes it impossible to see anything, but uh, this shows you. And you can see the separation between the ground planes here. You see there's this gap. So on both sides of the board, this is the low current uh, logic ground over here, and this is the high current um, high current ground over here. And then these two uh, pins go from each ground. You jumper them, and it connects both sides ground. Um, Maybe the worst idea in the world. I haven't gotten a chance to actually try this on a vehicle because, like I said, the components didn't fit. So it. Uh, it is what it is. I think it will work really well. I think I've seen this design used before, but I also have never seen this design used before that I can prove. So, worst case, I just go back and I combine those grounds and we're good. Um, so that's that. Um, check out the GitHub, grab the files. I'd love for somebody to uh, print out their own set of boards. Um, you can have it done at Oshpark if you don't mind spending extra money. Or you can have 10 of them done in China if you don't mind having extra boards. That's the funny thing. You can have 20 of these or 10 of these done in China for less than Oshpark will do three of them for. But Oshpark will do them fast. And uh, if you're in the U.S., it's uh, very fast. And uh, you only end up with three that way. But uh, maybe you want 10 if you're bad at soldering. You're going to practice a lot. Um, so that's that.